Hello, my name is Joseph Stolberg. What you are about to see is a simulated mediation session of a typical controversy that could be referred to mediation by county courts in the state of Florida. The persons who are playing the roles of the disputants, John Bruce Moore and Sharon Press, are themselves not the disputants in this case, but they will exhibit the kinds of behavior, make the kinds of arguments that are typically exhibited during the course of a mediation session. We will try to demonstrate the various strategies, techniques, and dynamics of the mediation process, although because of the shortness of time, what you will see occur might be telescoped in time frame and move more rapidly than would occur in the typical case. We will begin this demonstration by the mediator setting the room prior to his meeting the parties. Mr. Moore, Ms. Soltis, yes. how do you do? I'm Josh Stolberg. Would Thank you please you. have a seat? Ms. Soltis, Mr. Moore, Josh Stolberg, how do you do? Could you please have a seat over there? It, excuse me, Mr. Moore, I, I'd appreciate it if I could sit there. If you could sit over there, it would be very helpful for me. Well, what's the yeah. difference? I mean, there's just two seats here. Well, I, I'd feel more comfortable if I were able to sit here so that I could um, uh, be between you and, and Ms. Soltis. Well, it, I'd be, be very comfortable appreciate. sitting right here. Well, I, I, I'd very much appreciate it if, if, please, you could, could move to, to that chair so that we could move the discussion ahead. Uh, well, sir, you, I, you are the first person in this dispute I have heard use the word please, well, and your civility you very much. is greatly appreciated, okay. unlike that of others. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Moore. If you yes. could please have a chair. Thank you very much. You're welcome. My name is Josh Stolberg, and I've been assigned to assist you this morning. I haven't met either of you before today, and I don't know anything about the matters that bring you here to mediation. Before we begin, I'd like to make certain that we have accurately recorded your names and addresses. That's correct. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Moore. I'd like to explain to you my role here this morning and then the guidelines by which we're going to dis conduct our discussion. My job this morning is to listen as carefully as I can to the statements that each of you make and then see whether or not we're able to identify as thoroughly as we can the concerns and matters that brought you here and work out solutions to those matters that are acceptable to each of you. I have no authority to impose a decision on either of you. Our goal is to work out a resolution that is acceptable to each of you. If we're successful, I'll write down on a sheet of paper what each of you commit yourselves to do for one another. You will sign it, I will sign it, and that will become an enforceable court document. Let me explain to you the guidelines by which we're going to conduct our discussion. Mr. Moore, as the person who brought this matter to, the, uh, to our attention, I'm going to ask that you speak first. All right. When, when you finish speaking, Ms. Soltis, you'll have an opportunity to make whatever comments you would like to make. I ask that while one per person is speaking, there be no interruptions. I've given each of you a sheet of paper and pencil. If anything's said that you'd like to respond to, please don't interrupt. Simply note it on that piece of paper, and when it's your turn to speak, you can address it at that time. Whatever is said in this conference remains in this room. This is a private, confidential discussion. Um, from time to time, I'll be taking notes to make certain that I don't overlook or forget any of the matters that you've mentioned. But when we've reached a conclusion to our discussion, I will rip up my notes, and the only written record of our meeting here this morning will be the signed document that hopefully we will be able to, to develop and, and, uh, and reach. There may come a time during the course of our discussions when I will find it useful to meet with each of you individually to pursue in more detail some of the matters that we've talked about. If I think that will serve our purposes, I'll let you know at the appropriate time. I'm prepared to stay as long as is necessary and as long as we're making progress to try to work out these matters, and I presume that the two of you share a similar commitment. Uh, we're not allowed to smoke in this room, um, so I ask that you abide by that guideline. Are there any questions that either of you have before we begin? No, sir. No. Okay. Mr. Moore, why don't you tell us about the matters that brought us here this morning? Yes, sir. It's very simple. It's not going to take very long. Uh, Miss Soltis here is a tenant in my building. She moved in a little over a year ago and carried on her ride for a while, but she stopped paying rent. She hadn't paid for May. She hadn't paid for June. It's $200 a month. Two times 200 is $400. She busted out of windows, $175. We get $575. Excuse me. Excuse me. We get $575 on the table and we can go home. That's it pretty easy. It's not complicated. Uh, okay, if you could explain to me just a, a little bit more about the window that you made reference to. Can you tell me what's involved with that? Well, yes, to see where uh, this apartment building of mine is, 
there's a little foyer there that uh, you come in out of the rain, and uh, it's got a lock there. There's try to keep a little security in the place, and all the tenants have a key. But when she quit paying rent, uh, after a long time, uh, I changed the lock and gave everybody else a key. This kind of a little hint to her that she wanted to get in that night. She needed to pay the rent. And uh, next morning, uh, when is busted out? Uh, you gotta understand about this woman. She comes in at all hours of the night. She got there, found she couldn't get in, busted the window, reached around, opened the door, and went on to her apartment. I had it fixed. Here's my receipt for it. Well, I'll get, I'll get it to you. It's $175 that I've already paid to fix that place up. And I'm asking that uh, she repair the damage that she did. I'm not trying to make a dime on it. I just want to get the recompense for what she did. $200 a month, two months, one window, $175, $575. If we can reach an agreement on that, that's fine. She can stay. If we don't reach agreement on that, that's fine. She's going. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to raise at this time, Mr. Moore? Well, yeah. I, I really don't want to get too personal, but see, she plays these bands around town, and she's a drummer. And she practices when she gets through work at 2 o'clock in the morning. Starts practicing the drums at 2 o'clock in the morning. The whole house shakes. Now, I got honest people in the house. I mean, the tenants that are in my houses are pretty decent people. I got three families with children in school. The little kids are trying to sleep. The fathers are trying to sleep. They got to go to work at a real job the next day. The children's supposed to be rested for school. Two o'clock in the morning, here breaks out the drums. And the people call me to have something done about it over and over. I can't stand these calls in the middle of the night anymore. So I also think we just better well face up to all of it, Sharon. We better face up to all of it. Then drummings has got to stop, too. No more. That's another thing, sir. Yes. OK. Anything else you'd like to mention at this moment? Well, her attitude. I don't like her attitude lately. Since, since about a couple of months ago, she's, she's, really, she's really just gotten pretty sullen. And, uh, yeah, and you know why that is. Excuse me, Miss. Well, I don't know what happened to you, but she's gotten pretty sullen, and I think we, that uh, I really don't want her around if she's going to keep up this uh, crusade of hers that she's got about fixing up everything. Okay. Thank you very much. Ms. Saltis, would you like to respond? Oh, yes. <clears throat> Very much so. First of all, I'd like to correct some of the lies that he told. I didn't oh, wait just a minute. Bingo. Sir, I don't Not believe that you said Jeff. that I had to sit here and listen to her call me a liar. Everything I've said Mr. is Moore, so. please, if, if there's something you'd like to say, um, just write down a sheet of paper what you'd like to respond to. And when it's your turn to speak, you can address it at that time. Ms. Saltis, would you please continue? I didn't damage that window. He, hasn't, he didn't see me damage that window. Nobody saw me damage that window because I didn't do it. So I'm not paying a dime on that window. And he knows that. I, I don't owe him a dime for that window. And now I'd like to just clarify something else. He's right. I didn't pay him for May and June. And he's not going to get a dime for May or June either. Because my refrigerator and my air conditioning have been broken since the beginning of May. I called him up. I asked him to fix it. That's That was in our agreement. I mean, he told me that, that I'm going to have an apartment with a refrigerator and with an air conditioner. I don't have either one of those things. I'm not paying for that. I'm not paying for uh, May and June without having a uh, refrigerator and air conditioner. So you say okay. it's very easy. If she isn't going to pay the rent, she isn't going to stay there. And if he well, isn't going to fix the appliances, then I'm not going to pay the rent. And I told him that. I told them that on May 2nd, when, when they both broke, I have, it's not fixed. I've had other expenses as a result of not having a, a refrigerator. I have to go out to eat. I can't eat in my own apartment. I can't stay someplace. You know how hot it gets. I mean, this is crazy. OK, is there anything else you'd, you'd like to add at this point, Ms. Holtis? If I understand it correctly, then uh, there are a number of concerns we need to address. One relates to the matter of rent for May 
in June. Rent has not been paid for this month of June. Is that correct? Uh, the rent had been paid for 20, May. 20, rent had been paid for June. Right, we're at the 22nd of June, and, and you're asking for May's rent and June's rent. That's right. Um, in addition to the rent, you've talked about the damaged window, uh, and you've expressed a concern about the sound, the neighbors uh, sharing with you concerns about sounds from Ms. Soltis's apartment coming in the early morning hours. Uh, and you would like the matters with respect to the air conditioning and the refrigerator uh, to be addressed. Is that correct? That's correct. And I think he can, okay. can uh, fix up his attitude a little bit, too. I mean, we used to have a very pleasant, cordial relationship. And now, forget about it. He's making some very rude remarks to me. OK. Um, just to repeat again, Mr. Moore, how do you see these matters being resolved to your satisfaction with respect to the rent, the damaged property, the conduct in the, uh, in the apartment? Yes, sir. It's very simple. She quits playing the drums at 2 o'clock in the morning, puts $575 on the table. And Ms. Soltis, how, how do you Dream see these? On. How do you see these matters being resolved to your satisfaction? Fix that refrigerator, fix the air conditioner. I'll pay rent for July. Nothing for May and June, and nothing on that window. I don't know anything about that window. I'm not paying a dime on the window. Okay. As I indicated to each of you, there come times during the, the course of such discussions when I find it useful to meet e with each of you individually. Now is such a time. What I'd like to do is to meet first with Mr. Moore for yeah. approximately five or ten minutes. While I'm meeting with Mr. Moore, Ms. Soltis, I'd like to ask you to sit outside. And when I finish with Mr. Moore, I'd like to speak with you for a similar amount of time. Okay. Would you mind? Would you mind waiting outside for us? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, now, Josh, uh, you don't mind if I call you Josh. Yeah, we can get this thing right. settled and get well, it done right away. You can call me whatever you feel comfortable, Mr. Moore. Uh, what I'd okay. like to do is to take this opportunity to, to speak privately with you about ways in which the matters between you and Ms. Soltis can be addressed. I want to indicate to you that whatever's said here remains between remains in this room unless you give me permission to share it with Ms. Soltis. Okay, I think it'd be useful for uh, getting a settlement. Uh, let's deal first with the matter of the damaged window. Um, if I understand it correctly, uh, you learned about the window being damaged uh, after it occurred. You weren't there at the time it uh, oh, it's sometime during the night. I wasn't down there. I don't live in this place, you understand. I just rented out to these people. Uh, when I learned about it was about 8.45 next morning when the tenants called me and said there's broken glass all over the entranceway. I went down there, and sure enough, the wind had been poked out. So I called the people that come and fix things for me. You understand, they tear up my property all the time down there. I, I'm prepared. And we got the glass swept out, had new paint put in. It was all fixed by about 11 o'clock that morning. So that, as far as you know, I mean, th th you were not there to see Ms. Soltis do this, and as far as you know, nobody else saw Ms. Soltis do it. Well, correct? I don't know who saw her or who didn't. I wasn't there. I told you that. I was not there at the time. But I know that she did it because she's the only person who would want to come in there when the door was locked who didn't have a key because I gave a key to everybody else. Well, let me ask you, Mr. Moore. You indicated that incidents like this have occurred to that property and perhaps other properties you have in the uh, past. It's not just my building. I mean, that whole neighborhood is just Vandal City. I mean, they tear up everything all the time down there. How do you it's, norm not, it's not just my property. Okay. How do you normally cover those losses? How do you take care well, of Well, I tried to fix it up myself for a while, but I just couldn't keep up. I, I finally got me some insurance. It costs like crazy, but I just have some vandalism insurance, and uh, when something happens, I just call and try to get it fixed as fast as I can. So if you don't get at it right away, they'll just tear up more and more. And the only way you can hold it building together down there is fix it up fast. So I got myself set up. When something happens, I call people in, turn in the claim. Okay. Let me ask you, Mr. Moore, as a, as a sort of a framework for a settlement, if the matters with respect to the rent for May and June could be worked out to your mutual satisfaction with regard to the behavior in the apartment. And those concerns the way in which the two of you communicate with one another. If those matters could be resolved to your satisfaction, would you be willing to deal with the matter of the damaged property, the window, in the same way you've handled all the other incidents uh, of vandalism to your property in the past? Well, I've already taken care of it. I mean, I've already had it fixed. You mean have her not pay for tearing it up? That's right. Well, why shouldn't she pay when she tore it up? Well, because at this point, in terms of being able to identify with, um, uh, with accuracy that, in fact, she was the one who did it, is at, at this moment uh, up for grabs. No, nobody really apparently saw her do it, uh, and, it hasn't been, and, and you didn't see her do it. So there's, there's some doubt, at, at least, as to who was the person responsible for it. 
Are you telling me that just because I didn't see it, I don't know if she did it? Well, I'm suggesting to you that if you have to go to court to get her to pay for it, you're going to, there's a burden of proof on you that you're going to have to meet. Don't, and don't perhaps... mention to her that she could go to court. Now, you said we're going to keep things private. That's correct. Don't mention to her that she could go to court. That's the last thing we need is to go to court on this thing. All right, I didn't see her do it. If she were in court, they'd probably believe her. I'll, 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 I'll think about that. Let's, let's, if we get the rest of it figured out, I've already handled the window. I could handle that. Okay, fine. Let's talk about the matter of the rent. There, there really, as I understand it, uh, there are two months for which rent has not been paid, May and this month of June. We're now at the 22nd of June. Um, you got, got July facing you. You indicated earlier that Ms. Soltis has been a tenant of yours for some time. Can you give me some sense of how long? Well, yeah, you know, that? people move in the, down there. They move in and out pretty fast, month to month tenants. They might stay three or four months. Uh, she's been there, oh, over a year. She's been there over a year. Over a year. And it's only May and June's rent that has not been paid. For, for the prior 12 months or so, she's paid the rent to you. Uh, in full, is that? Well, uh, that, that's true, but it's very misleading to say it like that. I mean, she has never once paid her rent on time. Never once. Could you explain Supposed that to me? Supposed to be paid on the first. But she works these night jigs, she calls them, or gigs or something like that, where she just picks up something in a bar where she can, and no telling when she'll get some work. And uh, she'll pay on the 3rd, she'll pay on the 10th, 17th, 23rd, whenever she can, she'll come in and pay it. I say this, she's been a pretty good old girl about paying, but I never know when it's coming. She's never gotten more than a month behind until May. Now we're here two months behind, and I've had enough of it. If the matters of rent for May and June could be worked out to your satisfaction... She'd pay them. Would there be a more favorable arrangement for method of payment for rent to you for months into the future? You've indicated she's always paid in the past, but the timing of the payment has varied in terms of the time yeah, of month. Yeah. Would, see, would there see, be a see, more Josh, satisfactory See, Josh, uh, those of us in the business world here, uh, we have to know when the money's coming in, and I can't count on her. If I could count on the money being there, I think she makes enough she could get the money to me, but I just never know when it's coming. Suppose she were willing to pay you part of the rent at the beginning of the month and part in the middle of the month, say 100 by the third of the month, the second 100 by the 15th. Would that form of payment be uh, You know, that might, that, that, might, that, might help, that might help her a lot. That might help her a lot. Would it help you? Uh, well, yeah, if I knew when the money's going to come in, that would help me. I could take it 100 on the third, did you say? By the third. 100 on the 15th. I could live with that. Yeah. You could live with that. Maybe that would, in terms of future payments, uh, be helpful, a helpful arrangement uh, for both of you. With respect to the rent for May and June, that, that seems to be linked to the concern about the air conditioning in the refrigerator. Now, now let me ask you, um, if in fact we're not able to work it out here, Ms. Soltis moves to find another apartment, what are you going to do about the air conditioner in the refrigerator um, with regard to getting it fixed in, in terms of who would take care of it before uh, you're renting the apartment to somebody else. You mean, would I get it fixed before anybody else would come in there? Yes, that's what I meant to say. Well, yeah, I'd have to get it fixed. I hadn't thought of that, but before we could l rent to anybody, we'd have to get, you, you couldn't rent that place down there without a refrigerator or air conditioner. You, I, I've got three places vacant right now. If she goes out, she leaves, I, I'd get it fixed. Okay, so at, at least according to what Ms. Soltis said a little earlier, she uh, did not pay the rent because those particular appliances weren't in working conditions. Well, I don't know um, what got into her. She just stopped paying the rent. She just squabbling on there about the refrigerator didn't work and anything. And I don't know, one thing, one word led to another, and uh, she just quit paying rent. Okay. And I've had enough of it. All right, now she's, she's indicated. I mean, at, in one way or another, you're going to have those appliances repaired. The challenge now is to figure out whether or not there's a way by which they can be repaired. You can get some money for rent for May and June and, and have the whole thing arranged. You're, 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 you're slick at talking me out of things, but let me tell you about this one. There's no way I'm going to call Joe, who does my repair work, to come over there and fix those things if she doesn't come up with some money. Because he won't come if I don't pay him. And I pay him, and he comes. He's, he's reliable. She knows him. She'll trust him. He does good work for us, but he doesn't come unless we pay him. And they, we're not moving anywhere 
if we don't have some money for Joe to come and fix that stuff. Okay, now, now what kind of money are you talking about? What kind of money do you, do you need well, it's, it's in order to make the call? Well, it's $400 is the rent that she owes. Well, are you willing to make some adjustments on that in the interest of, if, I mean, Ms. Soltis in, indicated she incurred some expenses, unanticipated expenses for food and other things because these items weren't working. She, are you willing to, um, you know, sort of factor that into what, uh, in terms of... I am not going to pay her restaurant, figure? I am not going to pay her restaurant bills for her to go out eating just because the refrigerator doesn't work. No, sir. I don't, that's not my bill. She decides when she wants to go out. If she goes to a fancy restaurant, she can go. But I don't have to pay for it. Well, she indicated that one reason why she went out to eat was because she couldn't store food in the refrigerator because the refrigerator wasn't working. Oh, I guess what I'm asking you to, to consider is whether or not you, you've indicated you wanted $400, and I'm asking whether or not there's another figure you might consider sort of taking into account the fact that she incurred some expenses for the inconvenience of not having these appliances working. When is it money going to show up? See, I haven't seen any money in a couple of months. Well, um, we'll talk about total amounts in a minute. How much money would you need immediately in order to call Joe to come fix the appliances? Well, we had it all settled up. I'm not going to call him without seeing $100. I really need $200 to call him. I'd, if it was all settled up, if she got off her high horse, quit playing the drums in the middle of the night, so I get called all the time, agreed not to sue me about the stuff breaking down. Don't mention to her about suing. Don't say anything about suing. But if, if we were going to ease through that, so she wasn't going to do that, I, I, I'd... I'd go on for, I'd split it with her, $200. She owes me four, I'd give her two. $200? $200 would be acceptable to you for the rent for May and June. Is that, if, it's, is that, if it's here now. Well, suppose she didn't have all the money now to give you. Suppose you were talking about $200. Suppose she had maybe $50 to give you well, now. Well, yeah, but she, she's, while. Pre, uh, she's promised those little whiles. I'm at my end of it. I need $100 on the table now, $100 by the first of the week. $100 now, 100 by the first of the week. We do that, I'll call Joe, get the stuff fixed, and then she comes on, starts paying the first and the 15th, third and the 15th, cuts out the noise. I could live with that. Well, let me just uh, examine that a minute to make sure I understand. If she gave you $100 today, when are you proposing to call Joe? Well, she, she, she ought to pay me $200, and I'll call Joe. He said, well, okay. what if she had not got it today? Well, she, did, she probably doesn't have it today. She, she, uh, you never know what kind of money she's got. Could you find okay. out? Could you find out how, well, much, well, how well, much has she got? Get it well, on the table, well, and if it's enough, I'll call Joe. Well, all of us will explore it. If I understand it correctly, what would be acceptable to you, an arrangement acceptable to you, would be if she gave you $100 in cash as promptly as possible today, preferably. Today. Another hundred dollars by the beginning of the week. Uh, right. At the end, at the beginning of the week. Um, I'll if call were, Joe. Get you'll call Joe you. about about that. Right. Matt, okay. Now the only thing that uh, concerns me a little bit about that arrangement is that that would bring um, her paying you two hundred dollars total by about the twenty seventh of June, and then there'd be another week or so, and she'd be responsible for the July rent. Uh, I'm wondering whether or not there might be a problem in terms of her getting an additional hundred dollars together by the third of July. It's something I want you to consider when you're waiting outside. Maybe the month of July we're going to have to deal with separately so that by beginning in August it'd be an arrangement whereby she could pay you a hundred uh, at the beginning and a hundred in the middle. I don't know if, th if that's going to be necessary, but, but it strikes Look, me just I've, in terms I've of talking. Carried this woman, I've carried this woman past the first every month that she's been a tenant. And I can work with her if she gets off her high horse and decides she's going to be responsible and paying the rent. I, I can handle it if she'll come in. And if she if she'd do that, I could live with her. I could work with her. Okay. Uh, Mr. Moore, is there anything that we've said here that you wouldn't permit me to share with yes, Ms. Soldis? I told you, don't say anything about her suing. Mm -hmm. Don't mention a lawyer. Don't say anything about a court. If we do, if she takes me to court, she's gone and I got to go hire somebody 
don't say anything about going to court. Fine. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask you to sit outside for approximately five to ten minutes or so while I have an opportunity to speak to Ms. Soltis. Okay. Find okay. out how much Thank she's you got very today. Much. Find out how much cash she's got today, and let's get that on the table, okay? Um, please wait outside for me while, uh, while I talk to Ms. Soltis. Thank you very much. Ms. Soltis, thank you very much for waiting. I want to take this chance to speak with you privately to explore whether or not there's some ways to resolve the matters between you and Mr. Moore to your mutual satisfaction. Before I begin, I want to remind you that whatever's said in this room between the two of us remains in this room unless you give me permission to share it with Mr. Moore in an attempt to build a settlement. Okay? Okay. Now, um, there are a number of matters right, that wait, we wait, need to wait talk about. Most important, uh, did you get him to forget about this damaged window business? I mean, this broken window. I didn't do it. He doesn't, he didn't see me do it because I didn't do it. Can we just, like, get rid of that? Well, let's, let's talk about the matters of the rent for May and June and, and the other rent matters and what's going on in the apartment, and then we'll, uh, I, I think the other matter will take care of itself, okay? Okay. Um, Ms. Soltis, Mr. Moore indicated that he's received some complaints from other residents in the building about activities that have gone on in your apartment in the early hours of the morning. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I'll be honest with you, Mr. Stolberg. Um, I've always been a very good tenant. I, I think Mr. Moore will agree. You know, we, I always pay my rent. I've been very good in, around the apartment, you know, fixing things up, taking out, you know, making sure everything's going okay, watching out for the place. But, you know, since my refrigerator and air conditioning went out and he has not responded, I, I just have no interest in the place. And to tell you the truth, uh, he probably has received a lot of complaints in the last two months since that happened. See, because I'm, I'm purposely making sure that everyone can hear me practice so that they'll uh, call him. I want to annoy him as much as possible because nothing seems to be working. So what you're telling me is that if the matters with respect to the refrigerator and the air conditioning can be taken care of, we're it. able to work out the rent matters, the concerns that the neighbors have, uh, have expressed will evaporate. Mm-hmm. You okay. got it. Okay, fine. Uh, let's talk for a minute about the air conditioning, the refrigerator, and, and the rent. Actually, let, let me speak for a moment about the rent. Mr. Moore has indicated uh, that you've been a tenant in the building for over a year now, mm -hmm. uh, and that the rent has always been paid, except That's for right. the months of May and June. That's right. But he's expressed some concern that uh, sometimes the rent is paid at the beginning of the month, sometimes in the middle of the month. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, the timing of mm -hmm. your payments of rent? Yeah. Well, look, you know, I, I'm sure he told you I, I do play in a band, and um, I don't always get paid, you know, the first of the month. It's not like having a regular job where you get, you know, your regular. And sometimes I always get my money in. I always get the rent paid. But sometimes it's not till a little bit later in the month. It's a matter of when I can get that $200 together. Uh, you know, sometimes at the beginning of the month I've got part of it together, but, you know, I don't even want to start with him on that with partial payments, and, you know, I, I wait until I have it all together. So sometimes it's the 15th. Um, I think even one month I was as late as the 17th. Mm -hmm. You indicated you don't want to start with him on the idea of partial payments. Yeah, I know him. He's a stickler. Well, well, let me ask you, would it be more comfort a more comfortable arrangement for you if you paid, say, half of the rent by the, you know, at the beginning of the month, say, by the third of the month, and the second half of the rent by the 15th of the month? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, would be, that would be very helpful. That'd be helpful. could do that. Uh, well, I don't think well, he'd ever agree to that, though. Well, um, we, we can talk about that with Mr. Moore. In point of fact, I think in terms of his concern about when he gets the cash and seeing it on a regular mm -hmm. basis, that arrangement, in fact, might be uh, quite responsive to his concern. So no, we can talk good. about that for the future. Um, we have the immediate problem of the rent for May and June that we have to take care of. That's right. Um, Not a dump. And that's, uh, that's obviously tied to the air conditioning and the refrigerator mm -hmm. from, from your vantage point. Um, Mr. Mr. Hey, yo, are you all through in there yet? Uh, no, we're not, Mr. Morrow. will be a few more minutes. Could you please wait? Could you please wait? Thank you very much. Um, let me speak a moment about the air conditioning refrigerator. Um, if Mr. Morrow were to get that repaired uh, promptly, um, there'd be, if I understand you correctly, there'd be no question about your willingness to pay rent in the future. Is That's that right. Okay, if that were repaired in a prompt fashion, what would you be willing to do with respect to the rent for May and June that has not been paid? Look, I, I don't think I owe him anything for May and June. You know, I've been living in an apartment, you, you can barely call it living. 
I don't have access to my refrigerator. I have to eat out all the time. It's costing me a fortune to do that. You know, that, that's, not, that's not my typical lifestyle. I don't like to do that. And, and, you know, no air conditioner. It's been very uncomfortable. I, you know, clearly can't have friends over or anything like that. I, I don't think I owe him anything on those two months. I appreciate that you've, you've experienced some inconveniences, no question about that. My concern is at the same time, you've also had a roof over your head. You've had uh, various kinds of facilities. It's not as though you've been without an apartment for this entire period of mm -hmm. time, although it hasn't quite been the apartment that, that you uh, have, have been living in and thought you that mm -hmm. were contracting for. Uh, and so I guess what I'm, I'm really wondering is, what, although you haven't had all of the services for that period of time, you've surely had a substantial number of those services. And I'm wondering whether or not uh, you'd be willing to consider making some kind of a payment for the rent for May and June, not the entire $400, mm -hmm. but, but a substantial portion of the rent. Well, I don't know about substantial, but I, I, I guess I'd be willing to do something. You know, you'd have to give me a key to get in, first of all, you know. Okay. Uh, this locking me out of the apartment, is, mm -hmm. uh, that's inexcusable. Um, but I, look, you know, I'll be honest with you, I don't want to move. I, I've lived there for over a year. It's worked out well for me. Um, it would cost me more to, to, to live someplace else. Right. I, in, in an attempt not to incur those costs to move and live someplace else, let alone the moving expenses plus mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. higher rent, I mean, would you be willing to consider uh, you know, a payment, total payment to him somewhere in the range of, say, $250, $300? Well, look, I, I I don't think I can go above $75, $100. 75 to 100 for both months of May and June? Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, I think if, if that's um, what you're considering, uh, based on discussions with Mr. Moore that, and that he's expressed to you clearly, I, I don't think that's going to result in the two of you reaching agreement. My, my, mm -hmm. my instinct is that he has a concern about getting cash quickly um, and making some accommodation on the total rent for May and June, mm -hmm. but has an interest in an immediate cash payment. I mean, would oh, you be okay. willing to consider, uh, say, that $7,500 payment, um, you know, promptly? Well, I, I, I've got the $100 with me now. I, you know, I, I'm ready for that, but there's, that's it. I mean, there's no way that I can give him, today's Wednesday, I, I, I won't get another payment from a job uh, until after this weekend, until after I play this weekend. So uh, it's got to be after, after Saturday night that I'll get paid for any additional money. I mean, that, that's it. $100 right now is what I can give him. All right. Now, the concern that Mr. Moore has is that for him to call the person to repair, come to repair the, um, the, the appliances, the refrigerator and the air conditioner, that person is going to require some money to be paid uh, when the service is provided. So Mr. Moore's concern is uh, to have some cash to be able to make that, uh, to make that payment. You've indicated a willingness to pay $100 today. If he makes that call. Well, um, I'll if, pay him $100, but I want, I mean, I want that. I'm not paying him unless he's agreeing that he's going to fix this stuff. All right, let's proceed on that presumption. There's going to be a payment made for May and June. When those payments are made, the refrigerator and air conditioner will be repaired. If you were willing to pay him $100 in cash today, there's a difference. I mean, that's $100. He was asking for three, $400. Uh, is there some number the two of you could agree on uh, in between there that would be acceptable to you to resolve the matters of rent for May and June? That's all we're talking about at the moment. Mm-hmm. Well, the only way I'd give him any more above that $100 is if I stand there when he makes that phone call to Joe, Joe's his repairman. Mm -hmm. Very good. Because I know when, when he calls Joe, that Joe will be there and Joe will fix it. I mean, there's no question about it. But I, I don't trust him anymore. You know, he, he left me with two months without a refrigerator and air conditioner. I, I can't trust him. It, I have to be there and see him call Joe, hear him do that. If, you're, it, if he did that, I'd come up with some more and after some more. Saturday. After Saturday. Let's talk about the beginning of next week. What, okay. What kind of cash could you come up with at the beginning of next week to sort of put to rest the matter of rent for May and June? Well, no more than another hundred. Okay. So if I understand you correctly, you'd be willing to pay $100 today, 
hundred dollars say on Monday after you've played your, mm -hmm. your gig on Saturday, get paid. Uh, as you pay him the second hundred, you would if stand he, there right. as he makes the call, make the payment. All right, now that would take care of rent for May and June. And then in a couple days, in a week's time, you're going to have to deal with a matter of July rent. How could you, no, I what, can't. what can you do about that? Can't do it. Uh, now, I, I, I won't get another substantial payment until uh, the 13th. 13th July. of July? Yeah, I, he'd have to wait till after that, around the 15th. Yeah. You'd be able to pay. I'd be able to pay the two hundred July rent, fifteenth, and then beginning. That all fixed. And then beginning in August, the two of you, presuming it's acceptable to Mr. Moore, mm. could agree on half by the third of the month, half by the fifteenth. That'd right. be acceptable to you. Okay. Now, if all of those things were uh, taken care of to your satisfaction, um, the behavior in the apartment that has led to neighbors complaining would be uh, modified uh, appropriately. And there was another concern expressed by Mr. Moore and actually both of you when we were all together, and that related to the way in which the two of you communicate with each other. Uh, has, has that been affected by, uh, by the incidents of the last couple of months? Yeah. Yeah, we used to get along real great. You know, I, I'd kind of look after things for him. I don't know if he told you, I, you know, the rest of those tenants, they're, they're a little shaky there. And, uh, you know, I, I'd make sure that everything was okay in the building. And we had a very nice, cordial relationship. But, um, you know, he's called me some, some really nasty things I won't even repeat here. And, uh, you know, it hasn't been particularly pleasant between us. Okay. And um, am I accurate in presuming that if those things were said to you, you defended yourself? You better it? believe it. Yeah, okay. Well, it strikes me that if we're able to work these things out in a way that's satisfactory to each of you, perhaps that kind of communication and level of respect that you apparently had before all this had could in one way or another be be restored if he lives up okay. to his uh, his uh, word okay. then i certainly will give him the respect okay well i'm 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 not sure I'm, i think we have made a lot of progress uh, all of us and we're quite close whether or not we're we're there yet i'm not quite sure but we're, we're very close i'd like to bring mr moore back in to discuss these matters before i do is there anything that we've discussed that you wouldn't want me to share with him well you don't have to tell him that i've been annoying him by playing loudly Okay. Okay. You, know, you don't All have right. to tell him that. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Moore? Thank you very much for waiting, Mr. Moore. I want to thank both of you for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak with you individually about, about the matters that brought you here. I think we've made some substantial progress. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but I think, uh, uh, I think we're quite close to reaching a resolution. There, there are several concerns. Uh, that both of you expressed about the way in which uh, the two of you have communicated with one another in the past 30 to 60 days, that it seems to have been um, by virtue of the events that occurred with respect to the rent and the air conditioning refrigerator, the, the tone of the communication has taken on um, a nature that, that both of you find uncomfortable. And my, my hope would be is that if we're able to resolve these other matters, that that, that method of, of communicating will evaporate and the kind of relationship that you enjoyed for a 12-month period will, will be restored. Um, there, there, there are a number of items that, that we need to address. Let me just indicate, with, with respect to the rent, each of you have indicated a desire that in terms of future rental payments beginning in another 30, 60 days, uh, that it would be convenient for both of you if rent were paid part by, say, the third of the month, uh, half by the third of the month, half on the 15th of the month. And, and that form of payment, I think, will, will be responsive to a number of concerns each of you have, each of you have raised. Um, with respect to the matter of rent for May and June and the repair of the air conditioning refrigerator, we're still, we're still a little bit apart on that uh, in, in the following way. Um, uh, Ms. Soltis, would you indicate to Mr. Moore what you would be willing to do with regard to um, those matters? Okay, um, John. Look, I, I don't want to. I don't want to leave this apartment. I do want to work things out. I did bring a hundred. I got a hundred dollars. I got a hundred dollars with me today. You do? Yes, I do. And I'm willing to give that to you today. Um, but I, I need some indication that you're going to call Joe. Well, I haven't okay. called Joe because I haven't had any money. You okay, know, well, I'm tell telling you, you, I'm willing to do this. The color of electricity is green. I told you that earlier. 
You okay. got a hundred dollars. We're Ms. on our way. Okay. okay, I got a hundred dollars today. Um, I'm I'm willing to give you the next hundred dollars, but but I need some indication, some guarantee. I want to be there when you call Joe. I don't have any problem with that. I told you, you get me two. I said she gets me two hundred dollars. I'll call Joe. But not when today. I, all of it. When I got two hundred dollars, I'll call Joe. You'd be, you'd be able to pay $100 today and a second $100 payment by? Um, well, I'd like it to be the uh, beginning of July. But um, well, I, 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 it's got to be, all right, it's got to be after this weekend. I get paid Saturday night. So um, anytime after Saturday night. Uh, all right, I'll go this way with you. You pay me $100 a day, $100 Monday. When I've got the second $100, I'll call Joe. I don't care if you listen. You can talk to him if you want to. All right. Tell you what. If I come over with that second hundred dollars, I hold on to that hundred dollars. You make the call. You get the hundred dollars. Sure, that's all right with me. Uh, okay. I can't uh, promise you now when Joe's gonna come. I understand. All I'm agreeing is I'll call him. I understand. I trust Joe. I, I know that. I know Joe does good work, and you know it won't be that long. Just, I just want to make sure that that calls into Joe. That's, okay, we're up through. Okay, so we're now now the matter the, the rent for May and June, the repair of the air conditioner and refrigerator can be resolved in that way. That that's a satisfactory arrangement to you, Mr. Moore. Right, and then we're going to start okay. the third. Okay, and now, the now now no, what's what's be uh, what has to be addressed now is how the matter of July's rent is going to be paid. Uh, Ms. Sultis has indicated that she is able to get a two hundred dollars together by the beginning of next week. Uh, right. But but then the question becomes for the um, you've both indicated it's in your your interest to have rent paid half of the, by the third half on the fifteenth. But for the month of July alone, because you've accumulated two hundred within the next four or five days, paying a hundred by the third of July might be a, a difficult Can't proposition. Do. So the proposal really becomes this, Mr. Moore. Um, that the rent for July be paid to you on the 15th of July, $200, and then beginning August, the month of August, you'd get 100 by the 3rd, 100 by the 15th. That's an acceptable, That's acceptable format for you, Mr. Moore. Carol, you know I've carried you a lot, Sharon. You know I've carried you a lot. And I'll go this time. 200 more for July on the 15th, but it's got to be there on the 15th. It'll be there on the 15th. Or you know. it's all over. And then on August, I don't want to hear the 15th. That's right. The 3rd and the 15th. 100 on the 3rd. That's right, 100 right. on the 3rd and 100 on the 15th. Yeah, I can do that. And cut out that sass and that noise. Well, let's, let's talk about that. If, if those arrangements with respect to the money, May, June, future rent, those arrangements are satisfactory, uh, we can agree really that beginning today, that the two of you, when you communicate with one another, it can be in a cordial, respectful fashion. Uh, and with respect to the, your activities in, the, uh, in your apartment, uh, particularly during the, the later evening hours, you will um, direct your activities in a way so as to minimize any kind of uh, concerns that other neighbors might have. You no willing problem. to do that? No problem with that. Uh, and then the only other item with respect to the damaged window, Mr. Moore, you would be willing to take care of that uh, it, through independent means? Well, I didn't see her do it, so I guess I'm stuck with it. Okay. Now, if I, I'm going to write up all of these elements of, of what you've agreed to here, and based on this written document, it's our collective understanding that all of the matters that bear upon the events that we've discussed here in mediation will be resolved to your mutual satisfaction. Is that correct? And he gets me a key for that so I can get in the building, right? Where's the first yeah. hundred? I'll give it to you. Okay, while I'm writing up this agreement, perhaps you could, uh, could find the hundred dollars in your uh, pocketbook and Mr. Moore, you could find uh, uh, the duplicate key for the foyer door. Okay. It's been waiting for you. Fine. The mediation session would conclude by the mediator drafting the elements of the agreement. He would read it to each of the parties to make certain that all phrases were understood. Each of them would review it, sign it, the mediator would sign it as a witness, and then a copy of the agreement would be provided 
to both Mr. Moore and Ms. Soltis. The mediation session would conclude by the mediator thanking them for coming, and he would escort them out of the room. That, in a somewhat accelerated form, is what a mediation session of a county court case would look like.